Hey everybody. Today we're adding annotations to data visualizations using R and the ggplot2 package. I've loaded up tidyverse already, that includes ggplot2, and set my default theme to minimal. I don't really love ggplot2's default gray panel background. I've also pulled up the help file for the main function we're going to be using here, that's the annotate function. Finally, I am generating a small toy data set so we can get a simple visualization to work with. I've set a random seed to one so that my work is reproducible for you at home. And then um, taken five rows at random or pseudo random from the built in trees data set. Then I'm building a very basic scatter plot here showing girth on the x axis and height on the y axis for those five observations. Saving it as P, not being too, uh, too clever with my naming convention today. And then I'll just print that out so we can take a look at it. There it is, super basic scatter plot. I can even zoom in on it here if you want to see it a little bit more closely. You can see that of those five points, we have one that's kind of outstanding in the upper right here. I think I want to label that as an outlier. I actually want to write the word outlier on there. Later on, I want to show you how to do um, arrows and segments. I'll also put a rectangle on here somewhere, and I'll um, mention about a few other things that we can do with the annotate command. Before I dive in with that, let's be really clear that what I'm doing right now is really just sort of writing on top of a data visualization. I'm not actually referring to a data set in any way when I'm putting in my annotations. When I write the word outlier on here, that word is coming from my own imagination not from a column in, sort of, in some sort of data frame. If I wanted to label every one of these points using a column of a data frame, that would be different. That would be a mapping aesthetic, um, and that's not really relevant to what we're doing here. Here we're specifically trying to write on top of a visualization that's finished as far as the data is concerned. OK, so let's get into it. Um, let's take the basic plot P and add an annotate. Let's add an annotation. And um, we have to specify a few different things. The first and most important being the sort of annotation you're doing. Do you want to add a point in? Do you want to add some text, um, a segment, or something else entirely? And um, if you have a little bit of experience with, um, with ggplot, you recognize all of those are geomes. And so we're using the same sort of language here and the same sort of vocabulary. We're going to specify the geom we want. And if we're putting in words, the most basic geom we could use is geom text. Later on, I'll show you geom label as well. Then we have to specify where we want the thing to go, where we want this text to go. So we need to specify both an x and a y coordinate. So I've done uh, a little tinkering beforehand and come up with uh, x equals 16 and y equals 75.5. And those are literally just values taken from the x and the y axis, where I've decided that my word looks uh, not too bad. Finally, I have to say what I want to write. And in this case, the syntax is label equals, and I'll just put the word outlier. There we go. You can tinker around with that a little bit. If you don't love where that is, you can move it down a little bit, a little bit to the left. I, um, I do a bunch of data visualization, but I'm not specifically a graphic designer and uh, not specifically a data viz expert. So um, you know, I'm going to be a little bit rough and ready here on that stuff. Now, one thing I want to point out right from the start is that if I zoom in on this, the position doesn't look as good. And um, that's because the position is specified relative to the x and y coordinates on the x and y axes. Um, same with the point here. But now the scale has been sort of magnified. And we have um, now more space between the same two points in our visual palette versus what we had over here. So when you're deciding where to put your annotations, you have to think in terms of what your ultimate size is going to be for your plot, whether you're going to have it in a little window like this, a zoomed in thing like this. If you're putting it inside of a quarto or markdown document or a presentation, for instance, you have to think in terms of those dimensions right at the outset. Uh, last thing I'll mention, these coordinates, um, 16 and 75.5, those are referring to the very middle of the text right here. So 16 and 75.5 are here in the middle. It's not left justified or anything. It's right in the center. OK, so um, the next thing I think I'll do is to actually move the word outlier a little further away and then connect the word with this point using an arrow. First, I'll do a segment, then I'll do an arrow. 
While I'm at it, I think I'm gonna put a little background, a little box around the word outlier to make it potentially stand out from other points or from the panel that I have, the panel background that I'm showing. So starting over again with P and then adding a different annotation layer, I'm gonna use geome label this time, and that's similar to geome text, but it gives us that little um, little box around it. And you'll see as I, as I get this up there. Um, now I need to specify my X and my Y coordinates. And so this time for my X coordinate, I am gonna do 16.1. For my Y coordinate, I am, I'm sorry, for my X coordinate, I wanna do 14, sorry, there we go. And for my Y coordinate, I want to do 71.5. And for my label, I will do exactly the same thing as before, outlier. Okay, so I'm gonna be trying to make this, um, the zoomed in version be sort of my final one for this video. I wanna try and make this one look nice. This thing down here in the lower right hand corner is gonna look increasingly bad as I go on, so you might disregard that. Okay, so you see I put in this box here. I've also got some separation from this point. Let's go ahead and add in a segment connecting those two, and then after that, I'll go ahead and turn that into an arrow. So I'm gonna put in another annotation layer, annotate, and this time my geome is gonna be segment. For a segment, I need to specify actually four things. In addition to an X and a Y, I need to specify, well, where the segment's gonna end. So I need an X end and a Y end. So um, after having done some tinkering beforehand, I decided I would start at 14 comma 72 and end at 16.1 comma 76.5. Okay. So uh, you can see starting here at, uh, at those X and Y coordinates I specified, ending here at the X and Y end coordinates I specified. But of course I said I wanted to do an arrow. And so this is really just a modified segment. We just have to tell R how to modify it. The syntax here is a little bit awkward, but it's hard to imagine how they could have made it too much better without just making um, multiple, multiple new geomes. It's arrow equals arrow. And the first arrow here, the first word arrow, is the name of the argument. And the second one is an actual function. So the plus side of that sort of uh, awkward syntax is that there's a help file for the arrow function. And so we can pull that up. And um, I think it's this one. Yeah, there we go. And you can see you can change the angle um, at which for which the head of the arrow um, meets the actual segment. You can also change the, the length of that head. You can say um, if you want it to be a closed head on that arrow, sort of like a triangle versus the open head that we have here. So feel free to mess around with that, try and make this look a little better. Right now my, uh, my head does look kind of gigantic, so I might want to make that a little bit smaller, but I'm not gonna mess with that here. Fabulous. Um, let's do one more annotation. I promised you a, a, a kind of rectangle highlighting the, the main part of this data set, these um, four points that are supposed to represent the values that aren't outliers. So let's do that. Let's add another annotate. And this time it's geome equals quote rect for rectangle. And here I have to specify sort of, again, starting and ending X and Y values. The names of the arguments are a little bit different this time. It's x min and x max. And I want x min to be eight. I want x max in this case to be, uh, I settled on 11.5. I want y min to be 64.5. And I want y max to be 72.5. And if I just execute this now, it's not gonna look very good, but let's go ahead and do that anyway. So, you know, just like I asked, it drew me a rectangle, so I can't really fault R for that, but I didn't specify that I wanted to be able to see through the rectangle. I certainly didn't specify a color or anything like that. So let's go back and try and fix a little bit of that by adding some additional arguments. First of all, let's make this uh, transparent. So let's make an alpha of 0.1, so only 10% opaque. 
and you can kind of see that dark gray is now a very uh, um, light gray and I can see the points on the other side. I'm seeing through sort of at 90% efficiency. By the way, you can add an alpha to um, either of these other annotation layers that, uh, that we've made as well. All right, let's add some color. Let's add color of uh, dark green. Again, I could change the color of my text or the arrow if I wanted. I'm not going to mess with any of that. Now, remember, color in R is referring to boundary color. That's why I only have the green outer rectangle and the inside is still gray. If I want to change the inside, of course, that's fill. And I'm just going to make that regular green. There's that. OK, so um, you know when I am making graphics for communication, whether it be for a professional report, um, some consulting work I'm doing, or for an academic paper, these are the sorts of annotations I'm generally doing. Um, just small little things to make my data speak a little bit more clearly. If you're interested in doing something more towards the serious data viz, viz end of things, I think that's a much deeper well, and, um, and I recommend a little bit more specialized training for that.